The power sector, which accounts for more than half of greenhouse gas emissions, provides the most convincing evidence of how protecting the environment in general and limiting greenhouse gas emissions in particular can affirmatively promote economic growth. The reasons for this are straightforward, but the story is pretty long, so I wrote it up in this recently published book, Saving Energy, Growing Jobs, and will give you the five-minute version of it today. The reason that, the, that environmental policy is good for business is that it works in two different ways, but they double back on themselves and produce two different ways even more. The first is that there are tremendous unexploited opportunities for reducing carbon emissions through saving energy using energy efficiency. Well, what do I mean by energy efficiency? Energy does not sol satisfy any fundamental human needs. You can't eat it, you can't drink it, you can't wear it, you can't watch it. Energy is used as an input to a technical process to produce things that are real human needs, like powering TVs and computers, or providing comfortable spaces for people to live, or transportation from, place, from where you are to where you want to go. Those processes can be accomplished through dramatically less energy by using better technologies and better designs that often cost a little more to begin with, but are tremendously valuable returns on investment. The problem is that numerous market failures get in the way of those kinds of investments taking place. So virtually any business you walk into, a good consultant can go around and find a slate of measures with rates, rates of return on investment of 30% a year or 50% a year or even more than 100% a year, even in well-managed firms, and these aren't being done right now. So simply doing these green things can, produce, can improve the bottom line of business by giving them investment opportunities a lot higher than anything they've got uh, doing business in the conventional way. There are a lot of problems with this, though, particularly for small businesses because they don't have the information uh, on which to make these investments and they don't even know what kind of consultants they could hire in order to get the information, and by and large, government isn't helping them find out very much. Now, this leads to a second unexploited opportunity for business, and that is all of these great investments that your business could make, somebody else's business is waiting to sell you that technology, and they're having trouble selling it. So the suppliers of design services, the suppliers of equipment, could make a lot more money if these... 30% and greater annual returns are actually uh, encouraged in the marketplace through, gov through government policy. So to, to summarize, a company going green is usually a bit good business decision, at least when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. But if they do it not by themselves, but with the rest of their industry, it becomes an even better business decision, and this leads to the kind of feedback. Let's look at this first from the point of view of a supplier and then from the point of view of uh, an energy user. From the supplier's point of view, I'm selling you a service that's going to be a great return on investment and you're not buying it. So I could develop the next generation that would do even better, but why should I do it? I can't even sell what I've already got out there. So these failures of market get in the way of research and development, they get in the way of innovation, and they get in the way of an opportunity for new entrants into the marketplace to sell new products and create greater competition. From the user's side, if you're the only one to install a green technology, it's going to cost you a lot more than if it were mass produced, and you're going to have a lot harder time finding vendors to sell it to you, and you may have to wait around for it. So with good energy policies, the good choices that you could make are almost automatic. And the better choices that you can't even make now by yourself start to become available. So the result is the same energy policies that will lead to reductions in greenhouse gas emissions will also lead to continuous improvement in the effectiveness of business and a lot more opportunities for growth and profit. We already have a couple success stories of how emissions can be cut by well over 50%, even without consistent attention. 
And even though we can do even better than that in the future, even after we've done that. In other words, the tree that's producing the, low pick, the low-hanging fruit will produce more if you pick the first crop. The first example on a macroscopic scale is the state of California. For the last 30 years, since 1975, California has pursued energy policies designed to provide the least cost mix of electricity resources. As a result, more than half of California's electricity now comes from zero carbon energy efficiency and almost 14% of what's left comes from new renewable energies created after 1980 and I'm not even counting the legacy hydro which is also zero emission. The difference gets bigger every year. The difference grows about 1% per year, and so California's overall greenhouse gas emissions from all sectors are about half that of the rest of the United States. Uh, Other states have done approaching that well, and the United States isn't the only place where you have examples like that. In Europe, Denmark has had much stronger energy policies, both on efficiency and renewables, than the rest of Europe and accordingly has done better on reducing greenhouse gas emissions than almost anywhere else. On the micro level, let's look at refrigerators, which were the largest single use of electricity in an American home in 1973. And as the largest single user, they stuck out like a sore thumb, and we've had the most consistent policy attention towards refrigerators of any major energy user. And the result is, compared to 1972, today a refrigerator uses between 75 and 80 percent less energy than it did before, despite being bigger and more feature-laden and cheaper. So this is an example of what you can do when you apply um, strong energy policies. What's going on is that the economy is riddled with deep and persistent failures of markets, which destroy business opportunity as much as they destroy the environment. And a very simple set of policies can be developed and has been developed that can overcome these market barriers. Whether we understand the nature of them or not, we know how to overcome them. And these are really part of a recipe towards solving the global climate problem in a way that not only doesn't get in the way of business growth, but actually promotes it. Thank you.